braided rope and um, ten stakes. And when I, actually, when I first started my program, we spray painted it. Works just fine. And now they're spray painting them in state, so go figure. And you know, we went from nothing to the expensive stuff, and then state went to nothing. But it's good. Um, so you know, it, it, you can. And I've seen people make them themselves. If you're one of those DIY types of people, you get the um, webbing from uh, lawn chairs, the old-fashioned lawn chairs. It's uh, 60 feet, 12 feet, and the dimensions are also rules so you can write that down. And uh, O-rings and a couple of grommets, and you got yourself a port. So um, it is possible to do. So I've got just controlled, gotten control of the I throw. We're going to talk about singles for a second, but we also have doubles. We have team. We have unified, where it's a traditional Special Olympics athlete and a partner, a non-disabled partner as teammates, which is awesome and my most favorite. And truly happens to be a partner. So I won the toss. I get the power of the Polina. I have three tries to get it. It has to go past the half court, but in front of the the far throwing line, okay? So in front of Julie, but past the white. All right, so I get three tries. I throw, I didn't make it. I throw, I don't make it. I throw, I don't make it. My opponent is given one try. And let me, let me just say, if, if I consistently cannot make the, the toss with the Felina, don't put me in give me a partner that's able to do it so because this is in my mind this is minimum standard minimum standard is that I can do that minimum standard is that I can do that I can start the game I am a viable player in the game if I can't do that don't put me in singles put me in doubles with a partner that can do it yes as long as they're inside the court yes all right, and that's a, a great tactic for somebody that doesn't have much control of their strength. If they're crazy people, you know, if they're going to rocket throw it, yeah, back them up as far into the court as you can. All right, so you got to get it in that area just for the first throw. After that, all those lines go away. So just for the first throw, I must get it past half court, but in front of the far throwing line. Oh. 
involving their hand. And a lot of times individuals with cerebral palsy may have that claw kind of thing going on. And if that if they have to throw it that way, that's uh, up to the to the judge and actually to David from Special Olympics. If if you think that you need to have it reviewed, you can call and have him look at it at your athlete. Or you can have a verbal agreement and when you go to your tournament you let the tournament director know that that's um, an issue for the athlete. All right. If you have an individual with mobility issues and they use a wheelchair, um, the point of contact of the wheelchair is your front, but that's got to be behind the line. Okay. Um, it's okay if their feet are hanging over as long as their feet are not in contact with the ground. If you have an athlete with a wheelchair, please try to get a wheelchair that you can take the arm off of so that they have more range in here. Okay. Um, if they use a walker, point of contact is actually wherever the walker is. Okay, that they can't really walk. Right now, but if I stand it back here and I'm tossing it 
and I lose control of it, that's a throw, all right? So, you have this whole area 